Hi, my name is Dr. Jeffrey Terrell. I'm uh, an otolaryngologist or ear, nose, and throat surgeon at the University of Michigan. I see a lot of patients with nose and sinus disorders, and uh, today I'd like to talk about triad asthma, which is um, the triad is asthma, nasal polyps, and aspirin sensitivity. And I'll try to make this quick. I've got lots of handouts that I give to patients, but um, let me start off with sort of the typical history of triad asthma, what patients complain of, what, what, what happens to them over time, and then we'll talk a little bit about uh, treatment. Uh, there's, this is a big topic, and I'm, I know we'll not cover it all, but I think it might be helpful to people. So um, triad asthma is a disease that comes on usually in adults, um, people in their 20s, 30s, 40s, people that say, I'm totally healthy, and then something happened to me. And the three things in the triad, as I mentioned before, are nasal polyps, asthma, and aspirin sensitivity. So I can talk about sort of the average presentation, what people say, what, what, what's the order of these things. Most patients say they start to get some nasal blockage, and that's the polyps coming on. And as the polyps get a little bit larger, they block the olfactory nerves, the sense of smell nerves, and so they'll start to say, my sense of smell and my ability to taste food, to enjoy food, diminishes. So your tongue tastes four things, sweet, sour, salty, and bitter, but most of what you enjoy about food actually is a sense of smell. So people say, my nose plugs up, lost my sense of smell, my sense of taste diminishes as well. And then, uh, and then maybe six weeks or six months or six years later, they'll develop some asthma, so they'll start coughing and wheezing. They may hear some, themselves wheezing at night or if they exercise or go out in the cold, and they'll develop asthma. Most of them will go on to need inhalers, several inhalers oftentimes, a steroid inhaler to control the asthma. And then finally, um, a, a month or a year or five years later, Patients will take aspirin for something. They got an ache or pain or fever, and they'll take aspirin or Motrin or ibuprofen, and they will have an allergic reaction to it, where they they start wheezing, sometimes get quite short of breath, sometimes end up in the emergency room, um, or their nose will start running and get all stuffy, um, and that is the aspirin. That's the third thing. That's the aspirin sensitivity in nasal polyps. I have many patients that come in that have asthma and nasal polyps, but they haven't recognized they have or they just haven't had an aspirin or Motrin or a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug allergy. Um, and sometimes they have. And many doctors haven't recognized or put all three together. So that's the triad. Again, it can come on in people that are tire entirely healthy. And we see these patients for any number of reasons, but commonly for nasal blockage or decreased sense of smell. And sometimes the asthma doctors will pick it up. It turns out that people that have severe asthma, uh, that a fair number of people with severe asthma, meaning they're on two or three inhalers all year long, uh, will develop this aspirin sensitivity. So certainly if there's an asthma patient that says, I can't breathe through my nose or I can't smell, um, the majority of those patients are going to have nasal polyps and a lot of them will have aspirin sensitivity. It's interesting, the aspirin sensitivity travels along with uh, patients saying when they drink beer or wine, their nose will just drip and get stuffy and drip as well. So that's a sort of soft call. Um, some of these patients will also have clear runny nose intermittently, especially early in the disease, the first couple of years. They'll say, I can't rain, lean over, write a check because my nose might drip unexpectedly. And they'll also blow out, it sounds a little unusual, yellow rubbery mucus. And it's, it's mucus that's really sticky and yellow. It stretches almost like rubber cement. Sorry, it's a little bit gross, but, uh, but it's very unusual, and these patients do have that. So we see these patients in the Department of Otolaryngology at the University of Michigan. I see a lot of these patients. Uh, I feel privileged to work with a group of allergists that help us manage these patients. And I'll talk just a little bit about how we manage them. These patients with polyps, they, they do well with steroids. And, and when I mean steroids, there can be steroid pills or steroid sprays or steroid rinses. Steroid pills will shrink back the polyps temporarily, um, but we don't like to give a lot of steroid pills. And uh, it's more important that the patients be on some sort of steroid spray or steroid rinse. So steroid spill pills will shrink the polyps, but we really count on them going on steroid, usually rinses now, uh, to keep the polyps down at a, a controllable level. But many patients come in, the polyps are quite advanced, they're quite large, and if we can't control the polyps and keep their symptoms reasonable, then we offer endoscopic sinus surgery. Endoscopic sinus surgery is done with a small scope looking uh, in the nose under general anesthesia, so people are totally asleep. It's an outpatient surgery. Uh, we remove the polyps, we open the sinuses, and, um, 
and open everything so it drains well. But it's very important after that that the patients do steroid rinses and we show them how to do steroid rinses. If you've had polyp surgery before and you haven't been on steroid rinses, if you have asthma and nasal polyps and aspirin sensitivity and you're not doing steroid rinses, you should consider getting a second opinion. Most ENT doctors are doing that now, but many haven't recognized the patients have asthma or aspirin sensitivity. Um, at the University of Michigan, we've been very fortunate to work with a, a talented group of allergists who offer another line of treatment for these patients that have aspirin sensitivity, asthma, nasal polyps that have the that have the tried asthma, and that's aspirin desensitization. Uh, patients will go to see them, and they can be desensitized to aspirin. It sounds strange. It's kind of like allergy shots, but not kind of like allergy shots. And it turns out that you can be a patient can be desensitized to aspirin, and when they do that, the the polyps don't grow back as fast. Unfortunately, with tried asthma, the polyps almost always grow back. Um, but with steroid nasal rinses before and after surgery and with aspirin desensitization, uh, patients can make it much longer period of time uh, between surgeries. It also turns out that it's interesting that young patients with triad asthma tend to have polyps grow back very fast and somewhat difficult, difficult to control sometimes. And as patients get older, as they have more birthdays, as I say, uh, the polyps don't grow back as fast, which is, which is kind of fortunate because some of these patients have had three or five or seven surgeries. I think it's very important if you have triad asthma, nasal polyps, um, certainly anybody with severe asthma, nasal polyps, that you see somebody that uh, has some experience doing endoscopic sinus surgery, and more importantly, managing uh, the, the, the pa a patient after, after surgery with uh, steroid sprays, maybe aspirin sensitivity, and I won't talk about some of the new biologic drugs, that are out there. There's just being starting to get some data about some new drugs that, that attack the cells that cause polyps, um, but that data is still kind of immature, and I'm not prepared to talk about that until there's more studies that are out there. So I hope that's been helpful to you. If you have uh, asthma and nasal polyps, uh, certainly you want to know if you have aspirin sensitivity. Uh, you can actually can be tested for that by an allergist, by an experienced allergist. And if you do have tried asthma, um, you want to uh, consider some of these uh, treatment modalities and treatment options that we talked about. Um, we see a lot of patients with this at the University of Michigan and would be delighted to help anybody that has problems, uh, especially in our, in our area. Thank you.